Good morning to you. I just realized that I've been so close up on my camera recently because my finger, my thumb, while I'm holding it, hits the focus button. So, I'm currently sitting here drinking a little coffee that I made. And I have like this, I'm uploading my video and then I'm gonna go get something to eat for breakfast and I'm packing. Um, I just had this weirdest feeling. Like I was sitting here and I was like, I, like this, you guys, this honestly never happens to me. I was like, I miss my mom. I was like, I wanna call my mom. I, I mean, I really like almost was like, oh, I should call mom and tell her that I'm coming home today and she would love this place and to tell her, I mean, she, my mother would have loved this bed and breakfast. And I like, for a moment, I was like, I don't know, it just like hit me like it was yesterday. Like, I mean, I rarely, I know it seems because I tell so many stories and whatever about my mom, but I rarely ever, like honestly, like have days where I'm like really pining over my mom. You know what I mean? Like I don't have those days very often. So it's so weird to me today when I like woke up and I was like that. And the other thing that I realized was, hold on a second, I gotta figure out where there's some lights in this place. The other thing that I realized is that to some degree, like Tanya is kind of like my mom. Not, I mean, she's not like my mom, but she's like, I think what I mean sometimes is like my safe place. I don't know where I put my shoes. Are they there? Um, Cause like I immediately was like, well, I want to talk to my mom. And uh, then I was like, well, my mom's not here anymore. So I'll call Tanya. And then Tanya didn't answer. So I was like, well, I'll vlog, I guess. I gotta find a place to vlog while I'm packing. I don't know if this will work or not. It's not gonna work, I don't think. Does that work? Can you guys see me? Okay, so I'm currently packing, and uh, you guys are gonna help me while I pack. And then I'm gonna go get some breakfast. Ugh. The fan right here. It is currently 10.44. Um, I've got my outfit laid out. I took like a real quick shower because I wanted to film a video and look nice. So here's my, I'm gonna wear these blue Izod shorts and this t-shirt on the plane. I wanna be real comfortable. Um, I took a quick shower because I wanted to do my hair for a video. But I'm gonna take another one when I come back because I didn't like, you know, put on cologne, do lotion, all that kind of stuff. And then maybe I'll save this pink t-shirt out. I got this pink t-shirt at Meijer. You guys, I literally destroyed like so many shirts with this hair stuff. Let me show you. You want to see? So I really didn't pack a whole lot, as you can see. So here's my one button-down collared shirt that I brought. Can you see it there in the corner? Look. Destroyed. Took water to it. What are you gonna do about it, right? Can't cry over it. I mean, you can, but what's the point? Never do with my khakis. <laughs> do you ever overpack for trips? I like literally try to keep this as low as possible and I still overpacked. So I'll keep that t-shirt out in case I wear that. Alex rolls his shirt so he has more rim. I didn't really. My only fear is that I'll leave stuff because there's stuff like unpacked everywhere or uh, charging everywhere. That's my only fear. It's a beautiful day. It's been cloudy and rainy this entire week, and it's absolutely beautiful. So let me tell you, 
that you know yesterday I was completely stressed out, right? About the video down. Oh, it is. Hold on a second. <clears throat> yesterday I was completely stressed out about getting my videos done. So last night after I vlogged, hold on a second. Last night after I vlogged, um, Alex like went to bed right away, and um, so I went out and well I uploaded all my videos and then I went out and I drove around listening to my audiobook that I'm listening to for Booktubeathon. It's uh, The Last President about by Bill Clinton and James Patterson. It's actually really, really good. And um hold on. Airdrop. I gotta airdrop this to my phone so I can upload it. Um So I, uh, and I have a little complaint about me uploading videos just today too, I started thinking about this. People want to, people don't understand why I rant a lot. Okay, so anyway, then I drove around from, Alex went to bed, we got back in, he went to bed at like 11, 11.20. So I drove around from 11.20 until 1 o'clock, got my vlog ready, it's ready to go. All I have to do is go in like to Starbucks and up like add in the details. And then my Peter Rizman's video and my Peter Likes video, they're all ready. I've got already filmed my drama channel video and it's putting on my phone. I'm gonna I'll upload it and then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but this is my little complaint, okay? I think people don't understand a lot why. I mean, can we just talk about that packing job right there for a second with fan included? Do you guys see this? Here, let me just show you. A beautiful suitcase. I feel like I'm on. Look at that. Um, you know, people complain all the time about the demonetization and the money that they don't make on YouTube and on and on and on, okay? I don't make a lot of money off YouTube. Let's just be for real. I definitely don't make any kind of money on my blog, which I drive around in every night, which I choose to do. So that's gas money and where I'm putting on my car. But I don't make a whole lot of money off my vlog. I definitely don't make any money. Well, I really don't make any money off the vlog. I really don't make any money off of Peterisms or the BookTube channel. I mean, like, a hundred bucks total. So, when these YouTubers complain about having, they can't, they don't have time to upload videos and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, my stress, okay? This is like, I'm, my fat is being lit right now. My stress is about wanting to make sure that they get up so that everybody can see them. Because I love to make videos for you guys. I love making videos. I love reading the responses. That's my frustration. Is where do people, and I understand that this is a good deal for people and then they make their income off of it and then they rely on it. I understand that, right? I would love for that to be my life. You know, maybe one day that will be my life. But the reality is, where do we stop, like, don't lose the passion for something that you love to do where it becomes a job. Like, I was frustrated yesterday, not because I had to get him up to make money, which is the message that I hear a lot of people say. I was frustrated yesterday because I wanted my videos to get up that I had worked on for you guys to see because I know that you guys enjoy watching my videos and you know, or some of you do, some of you probably hate me and that's why you're watching this video right now. And to you I say, fuck off! But anyway, you know what I mean? Like, I... <laughs> Oh, my Atlanta. Anyway, I don't know. It's just not that deep. It just frustrates me because... It just frustrates me. I don't even know why I'm saying that, but... It just is like... I don't even know what this cord is to, you guys. Oh, it's to my other Sony camera. But my frustration, okay, let's be for real. You're not gonna write anything today. That's for bathroom stuff. Oh, I gotta take my medicine. Um, is that I wish that we were back at a YouTube where like, 
You know, I remember when I watched it and Chris Crocker got his check and he went and picked up his YouTube check and it was like $5,000. But like, you could be really excited for Chris Crocker because it was a very cool thing. You know what I mean? We weren't seeing YouTubers do that then. Now it's like, start a YouTube channel. And I'm not against making money off of it. Are you kidding me? My God, if tomorrow I woke up and all of my income was straight off of YouTube, I would love it. I would post more videos than I post now. And I think that is the frustration for me is that people just want to constantly complain about stuff. You know, it's like, but I guess I'm complaining right now, aren't I? Well, I didn't say I was perfect. Perfect looking, but. <laughs> okay, a lot of water I'll take with me. And that's about it. All right, you guys, listen, I am going to Everything's ready now, okay? I got those chargers. Alex's bags are over there. Put them in the trunk. Um, shut the door. Okay. I think I'm gonna go get some breakfast. There's this cute little breakfast place down the street. I'm going to do that one, uploading my video, and then come back and change and get ready. I think I'm completely ready to go. I had this weird moment last night. Like, so many people tell me that they, like, fall asleep listening to my videos. And I was, like, falling asleep last night. I was thinking, like, I love that. You know, I used to listen to, like, talk radio back in the day. And, you know, I grew up listening to, like, um, radio shows and stuff. I think somehow on this trip, Alex and I, like, changed sandals. Because these sandals seem too big for me. Um, but I love that people, like, fall asleep listening to me. I don't know that, like, <clears throat> or that they find my voice soothing. That just makes me happy, I think, you know? All right, well listen you guys, I'm gonna get off here, I'm gonna charge my battery while I'm gone. On, not on me, but on uh. What if I was like looking in here and I found a treasure, treasure map and all this time I could have been like looking up treasure in Essex, Connecticut. Do you ever think that way, see? That's why I'm totally forever a kid at heart always. Do I have anything else in here? My dad had one of these when I was growing up. I always kind of thought it was cool, but now that I see it like in this room, I don't know that I think it's that cool anymore. Okay, anything plugged in back there? No. Oh my God, I think I'm like completely done. All I gotta do is take a quick shower and, cause I wanna take a quick shower and put my sleepy lotion on, see? So that then I'm smelling good for the plane trip. Because we got a long plane trip. We got a layover in Detroit. We don't get, we leave here at like, well, I guess it's not too long. We leave here at like six something. We don't get back into Indianapolis until 11. So anyway, well, I'll be back in a little bit. See you guys later. All right, so I am, got my coffee, got my videos uploaded. I am leaving the Starbucks in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. And not only that, not only that, please hold while I put my back, oh, uh, I need to get my out of here. I was sitting in there, I bought some gum. I've never bought this gum before from Starbucks. Is it any good? I hope so. As I was sitting in there, where did I, did I not bring my cord? Oh yeah, there it is. Um, this adorable girl comes up to me, adorable, young woman. She said she was 26. Bridget, and she did, I turned and I looked at her and it was so funny because she reminds me, uh, she looked like our friend Justine. 
um, we have this couple that we're friends with, Justine and Troy, and she looked so much like Justine. Her hair was like really long and curly, she had gorgeous hair. And I turned and I looked at and I looked at her and I was like, I almost thought it was Justine. And she just kind of looked at me and she goes, oh, she goes, are you Peter Mon? And I was like, yeah. Now this, you guys, like this legit never happens to me. Nobody in public ever comes up to me. I know it's hard to believe being that I'm so YouTube famous and all, but it just doesn't ever happen. <laughs> oh, so she came up to me and she was like, are you Peter Mon? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, and this is what I absolutely loved about it, okay? She didn't come up right away and say, you know, like, I don't know why I loved this, but she didn't mm -hmm. say like, I love, you know, I watch your, this channel, or she didn't say I, I watch your, oh my God, I love the drama and the fans and all that kind of stuff. You know what she said? She said, I love your Peterisms channel. And I just like almost started melting. I just talked to my friend who I talked about yesterday, who is having her dog put to sleep on Sunday because she's so sick. She found a vet that will come to the house. And, um, you know, then this girl comes up to me and she's so sweet and she's like shaking. And I go, why are you, sh she's like, I'm so nervous. And she's like, you have no idea how much you've impacted me. And she's like, please, don't ever stop doing Peterisms. Don't ever stop that channel. And she's like, I was with it way back when you were my so-called healthy life and then the change. And I was so excited about the change. And now this new channel. And, to hear somebody in person, like, know that what I'm saying in a video is affecting them in some way, positively, I just, I said, do you think I'm any different in person? She's like, oh my God, no, you're exactly the same in person <laughs> as you are on video. I don't know, I just, I was so impacted by it. So, she asked if she could take a picture with me. I was like, absolutely. So, Bridget, if you're out there, thank you so much. You absolutely made my day. I just, that never happens to me, you know? And and I said, I asked her how she found my channels, and she said through Trisha Paytas, and, uh, which is so funny. I always hear that. And, um, but it just was, I don't know. It was just really nice. And it was really nice to get validation for that channel, because I love that Peterism's channel so much. But... All right, now I've had my emotional moment and I can go back to uh, picking up my husband and getting ready. So, I will see you guys later. Bye. So, we're all checked in at the airport. And we have two hours. Alex is smart. We have two hours and 50 minutes until we leave. And did you have a good trip, babe? Yeah. Good trip. Did you like the bed breakfast? It was cute. Do you miss PB? Sure, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we are on our way back now. We found it. We have our, it's four o'clock. It's like right at four o'clock. 404. And our plane leaves at 6.50. So we are eating at this place called, what is this place called? Black Bear Saloon. Black Bear Saloon. And I got a salad and a grilled cheese sandwich and Alex got chicken fingers. And he just pulled out his computer because he's gonna do some work. So this place is cute. See? It's nice to be able to just kind of See? sit down and relax. Huh? <laughs> See? Say something funny. Peter Mon. <gasps> we were just talking about how we love traveling together. I love traveling with you. I do too, babe. All right, well, we're gonna eat, so we'll see you later. Bye. We're finally on the plane. We're the very, very back next to the door. So I hope the door doesn't open. We're fine. <coughs> That's my cute husband. Which I just posted a picture on Instagram of us traveling over the last 10 years. So go check it out. <laughs> and follow my husband's Instagram too. Are you going to watch a movie? Yeah. What are you going to watch? I don't know. I don't know. Now I wish I had bought treats. <laughs> I have peanuts. You have peanuts? Uh -huh. How many? All night. Oh man. How'd you sneak them in? I don't know. They're right in my bag. They searched my stuff. They did? Yeah, they, they just searched my phone because I looked like, I don't know, something more dangerous or something, I guess. Alright, talk to you guys later. We are home. Alex, I'm putting my remote behind there. 
Alex is at home in bed. I need to turn the heat on because my windshield is, my car is like the windows are dirty. They're sitting in the airport and they fogged up. I don't know, but anyway. Um, we got home about, we got back to our house about 12.40. I unpacked and talked to him for a little bit and uh, then he fell asleep. It is 2.21 right now, but I wanted to vlog a little bit and listen to my audiobook for about a half an hour for Booktubeathon. And um, I got a lot of reading to do in the next couple days. I just put all my Booktubeathon books out. I have, like, there's no way I'm gonna get anywhere near completing it. I, I've gotta figure out like how, what I'm gonna do to read for Booktubeathon because I wanna finish at least, I wanna, okay, I'm, my goal since I have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday day. My goal is to at least get two books done. Two books plus my audiobook. So that would be three books total. Anything over that, I would be really proud of myself, but I don't think it's gonna happen. But we'll have to see. So, we are home. It's kind of good to be home. We had a good time. Um, it was so weird when we left today, like, or when I left the hotel room, because, you know, we always check out together, but I checked out by myself today because Alex was at the uh, conference, or it wasn't even like a conference, it was like a training. He said it was like 30 people or 20 people. Um, But it just was like, it was weird. It was like, it felt almost like I was traveling by myself and I hadn't done that in so long, like checking into a hotel by myself. I mean, I haven't done that in 10 years, you know? So, um, I checked out and kind of came up with the, I sat in the parking lot and like wrote in my notes. I have this idea for what I wanted my very first story like in my book of my memoir to be, but I have a new idea for my first story that kind of plays out throughout the rest of the book. And I don't want to tell you what it is because it's something, it's not a story I've told on here before. So, um, I wrote that out kind of, I didn't write it, but I wrote out like an outline on my notes of what I want to write. And, um, but we had a good time traveling back. It was, I'm just really tired. It's been a long day. I got up at eight o'clock and took him to the thing. And then I came back and I took a shower. And my plan had been to like come back, take a quick shower, film my video, go eat breakfast. I think I already told you guys this. Breakfast, come back, take another shower and then get ready to leave. But I didn't do that. I just came back and was like, okay, I'm just gonna change my clothes and put on clean clothes. And um, the outfit that I was gonna wear was completely destroyed. I didn't even see it on these shorts. There was like a stain like all the way up the thigh um, from this hair stuff. I'm so pissed. I'm sure it'll all wash out, but. Um, and it was really weird too. It was like this tube of like this hair stuff that like I had gotten as like a trial sample and it's weird that like it opened in the bag and went everywhere. I don't know, it's just, it's like that's, it's happened to me before in flying and stuff, but like, like the whole thing was empty and it was weird. Oh my God, there's a deer. Oh, squirrels and deer. I don't know if you guys can see this. You because people are always like, You always show these animals, but you can never see them. <gasps> Don't oh, he ran away. It's interesting driving around Connecticut, like how much it looked like Indiana. <sighs> so 
So then I picked up Alex at, well, then I went to Starbucks and I talked about that. And then I, um, I had this nail today that was like, I knew I should trim it this morning. And last night I knew I should trim it and I didn't. And the end like flipped up and I was like, I'm gonna lose the end of this nail again like I did that last time. But I trimmed it at the airport. So anyway, when we got into Indianapolis, I trimmed it because I was afraid I was gonna lose it. But uh, we flew, we, okay, so we got to the airport at like three o'clock and our plane left at like 6.50. So we went and ate, I showed you that. And um, then we flew to Detroit. I finished watching Red Sparrow on the plane. Man, that is a violent, violent movie. Like, I'm not a big violence fan. Like, I love thrillers and stuff like that, but when they get really violent, it reminded me kind of a little bit of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. It just was really violent. And um, then we flew, then we had like an hour in Detroit. <laughs> we went to like, Detroit Airport has some nice restaurants. And well, the wing that we were in, which I don't know if that was just Delta or whatever, but they had like this wine bar that was really nice and like they had like cheese plates and they had like this like upscale macaroni and cheese and like the menu was really good I wasn't hungry and we sat down and because Alex was like I want a glass of wine I was like okay so we um, sat down and I said to the guy the guy's like I said I'll have a coke and he goes oh we have um, water and wine. <laughs> I go, all you have is water and wine? And he goes, yeah. And I said, oh, well, I guess I'll have wine then. And he goes, okay, which wine would, and their wine menu was like huge. He goes, which wine would you, and Alex like looked at me with big eyes. He goes, well, which uh, wine would you like? And I said, I meant water. <laughs> I, I don't drink. <laughs> he goes, oh. I was so tired today, you guys. And so then um, I sat there for like 10 minutes and I told Alex, I said, I'm gonna go get some like M&Ms or something and I'm gonna go uh, watch the movie and he goes, or watch the end of my movie and he goes, okay. And he goes, I'm gonna be there in just a second. So I went and just sat and like charged my phone cause like the Delta terminal has like these phone chargers that are great. I don't know if it's all over the airport or just there, but. Um, and I watched into this movie that I had started on our trip called Freak Show, which was actually written by James St. James, who also wrote Party Monster. And the movie was really sweet. Like, I would have liked it to be a little bit different at the end or some things I would have added, but I thought it was really good. And um, it was kind of about this like gender bending kid and just like how he identified and the kids at school being really mean to him and um, that um, that Anna Breslin, is that her name? She was in it. She was really good. It kind of reminded me, did you guys ever see the movie back in the day, Saved? It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. But um, it was good. And then I was going to watch another movie. But I have like a half an hour left of um, Wild Wild Country. Can we just talk about that documentary for a second? Okay. <laughs> Well, and then I watched uh, 40 minutes of the first episode of Orange is the New Black, which I love that show. And I know that people are so worn out with it and they don't think it's that great anymore. I actually just bought the book on Audible because I heard that the book was completely different. But like, I what I really, it's interesting to me that Orange is the New Black just keeps on going on and on and on and they like come up with new ways to like present it. And so when I'm, I was like, how are they going to do this? Because if you know how the last season ended it's kind of like were they going to pick up right where they left off which they don't really but it's kind of interesting what they do with them so um i'm excited to see what the season's like it feels a lot different to me than other seasons but anyway i was laughing on the plane so loud these girls next to me were they were like uh she kept this girl kept on looking at me and she was like <laughs> i was laughing so hard if you've watched it, it was the part where Suzanne is getting the psychiatric evaluation and she sees like all the people dancing around her. I was like laughing my ass off. Plus I love that song that they were singing. But, um, and I'm not, that doesn't ruin it for anybody. So, um, yeah, and then we took the flight. Okay, Wild Wild Country. <laughs> 
Why do I have my rights on? Can somebody explain to me, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> this is so bad, okay? Why I liked Sheila, okay? I don't know what this is about, what this says about me as a person. Like, she was really, like, not a right person in her head. But, like, I felt sympathetic towards her to some degree, you know? And let me just tell you, this is on the heels of, this is, so Alex was doing work while we were eating dinner. So, I sat there and watched videos, and I watched, um, I should probably talk about this first. I watched this Oprah interview with John Wayne Gacy's sister, okay? It's like a three minute video. And it was about the fact that she spent John Wayne Gacy, like John Wayne Gacy's last day before he was executed, she spent with him. And the people, and you could tell kind of Oprah really didn't understand what she was saying, but she was like, they, there was a picture of them hugging on the last day. So if you don't know who John Wayne Gacy was, he was the killer, the serial killer. I think he lived in Chicago. And he dressed up like a clown in the neighborhood and did like, I don't know, he was like real involved in like the city and stuff like that. And like, uh, he was like well respected. And I think he killed mostly gay men. I, I'm pretty sure men or gay men. And then he would bury them underneath his house. If, am, I, am I right about this? I think I'm right. And, um, so anyway, but he was executed and I guess it was like, it's been like 31 years. It's been a long time because she said that she hasn't talked about it in 31 years. And Oprah was like, you haven't told anybody? And she's like, no, I don't go by the last name Gacy. Nobody in my life knows that's my last name. I did that to protect my children. And she's like, besides my husband and my children, nobody knows that, you know, he was my brother. She was like, my sister has passed away. She was like, my other sisters never used her maiden name. And she's like, nobody knows. And Oprah was like, well, I heard that just last week you told your boss for the first time in like 30 years. And she's like, yeah, I told my boss last week that he was my brother. And Oprah was like, well, what was it like? what do you think about it? Like, and she goes, they show this picture of them hugging and she was like, when was this picture taken? And she said that was taken the day of the execution before they transported him. And she said, you know, people would probably think like, how could you hug him? She was like, and, and I thought, like, I thought about this and Alex actually, and I had this really interesting conversation about this. Cause I was like, what if this was like your brother Fufu or something, you know, like, and you never knew this. Right. And she said, and Alex's perspective was very interesting on this. She said, you know, he was my brother. I loved him. And she was like, I never knew that dark side of him. She was like, until he was caught, I had no idea that's who he was as a person. And like what we know of John Wayne Gacy was that like in the public eye, he wasn't like super strange. Like he maintained kind of, you know, the, this con conservative kind of like, you know, respect or whatever. But anyway, um, and she said, well, what did you say to him that last day? And she said, I told him I loved him. And she said, and I told him I forgave him. And she said, not for what he had done, because I could never forgive him or forget what he had done to people. But I forgave him for what he had done to us by his actions. And I thought that was interesting. You know, it's like, sometimes forgiveness is not about forgiving somebody for all of their actions, but maybe just in their actions towards you. And if we truly believe that forgiveness is for us, then I think that, you know, like, I think it's important to have those conversations. You know, my cousin, she and her mom, my aunt, they had kind of like this back and forth relationship. They always did. You know, I think there's a lot of mothers and daughters that have that kind of like caustic relationship. and. There would be times that my aunt would just drive my cousin crazy. I mean, like, and honest to God, I loved my aunt, but, like, she could really push Caroline's buttons. And I remember, like, probably two months before my aunt passed away, I remember where I was. I was sitting in the Meyer parking lot. I just left, and I was talking to her on the phone, and Caroline was really upset. And it was, well, it, it was, like, two, three months before, because we were supposed to go for my aunt and uncle's 50th anniversary. Um, to this trip out of town and Caroline was like I'm not gonna go 
And I was like, why not? I was like, Caroline, your mom is so excited about this. She's like, she's driving me crazy, Peter, I can't. They worked together um, for a very long time and were business partners. And she's like, I can't. She's like, she's driving me crazy. Like, Peter, she literally is driving me crazy. She says the most horrible things to me. And I was like, well, I've heard you both say horrible things to each other. And she's like, I know, but she just presses my buttons and I don't know what to do. And I said, Caroline, let me tell you something. I said, you're never gonna fix this with your mom. You're just not, it's too late, right? But I think that you need to have a conversation with her where you say, you know, Mom, I love you. I'm really sorry that our relationship has gotten to this point. Like, but, you know, at the end of the day, no matter if we're fighting or if we're loving, because they would either, like, be arguing or they were, like, getting along so well that they, you could tell that their love was so deep. And, um... I said, you're just gonna, you, you make sure that you say what you wanna say. I said, I'm glad that I did with my mom. I'm glad that my mother and I didn't leave anything unsaid, you know? And she had that conversation with her and, you know, she was able to, you know, give herself and give my aunt peace at the end about the relationship. And, you know, Caroline was with her, you know, I and mean, she had walked out of the room. She brought her, Caroline did everything for her mom and dad. I mean, you know, like all of my fears that I ever had as an only child of having to deal with everything on my own like was realized by Caroline like she had because she was an only child too she had to do all of that and didn't ask anybody for help I mean I mean I like call her and be like do you want me to come to the hospital no 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 I don't need this no 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 that you know and like she did it all on her own million doctor's appointments on and on and on and I think it's important to clean our side of the street no matter what the condition of the relationship or that person has done I just think to be able to clean that up and go forward, you know, I don't know. I just can't even imagine having a brother or a sister or a family member that was a serial killer. I just can't even imagine, you know what I mean? I do wonder sometimes, like, what do you do, like, when you have a family member, like a child especially, right, that you don't respect anything that they do and put out there in the world? Like, how do you look at that, you know, and say, you know, especially it's interesting because I cover a lot of, like, drama, you know? And none of the drama that I typically do is any kind of drama where I think that, like, parents would look at it and say, like, wow, like, what, where did I go wrong? You know what I mean? Like, public eye kind of drama. But, I mean, I think we know that there are a lot of people out there like that where it's like, I, I don't know, it's, how do you reconcile that, I think? You know, and Caroline got to have the conversation with her mom. I mean, literally at the very, very end, like the day before. And she, I think maybe even the day of at the hospital before they brought her home for hospice. And she said, are you scared to die? And my aunt said, no, I'm not. And she said, you're not? And she goes, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be with, you know, your aunt. And I'll be with, and she said, I'll be with Jesus. And I'll be with grandma. And she said, I'm not afraid. You know, I'm ready. And um, I think that's, you know, I think that's, if, if that's your belief, which that is my belief, that we have an afterlife. One thing I loved about what Sheila said in the Wild Wild Country, I want to get to her in just a second. But one of the things that I loved that she said was um, at the very end when she said, I don't have a lot of control at this point whether I go to heaven or hell. Wh which I didn't really like that because I really believe a lot in redemption. Um, and reading about Sister Helen Prejean, who was the nun. If you ever saw the movie Dead Man Walking with Sean uh, Penn, fantastic movie. But it's a true story, if you didn't know that, about Sister Helen Prejean, and I've heard her speak. And um, she believed so much in redemption. And if you've seen the movie, the movie, like, it makes you think that he's working with his nun because he's gonna get off and he's gonna get a pardon at the end. But it has really nothing to do with that at all. It's really all just about redemption and forgiveness. And that's like at the very end, you know, where, like, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's, I mean, it's dark. I mean, it's a really dark movie, but you want to talk about cathartic change. Um, but Sheila says at the end of Wild Wild Country, she says, whether I go to heaven or whether I go to hell is really not my choice at this point. But when I get there, Whatever, wherever I end up, I'll make it, I'll turn it into paradise. And I thought that was kind of like an interesting perspective. I'd never heard anybody really say that before. I don't know why I felt sympathetic for her. I think because like, 
I think she so keenly saw other people really, really use and abuse Osho, the Bhagwan, like, and I think that guy was kind of a scam artist of the world. I mean, it just appeared that way in the video of the documentary, but I think she purely believed and I'm not, I don't agree with her actions of poisoning people, obviously. Y'all know I don't believe in all of that. I can't, I would feel so. Somebody commented on my video and said they lived in Antelope. Okay, I don't know who you are that you live in that small little town, but that is crazy, okay? But, um, I don't support any of her behaviors of what she did, and I don't think we really to this day even know. Like, really, the Australian woman was really the only one that took full responsibility, I thought. I really liked that woman. It was like she had kind of had this full change, and she talked about being woken, uh, you know, or being awakened, and, um, you know, like, that was when she started becoming a human being again, and she was like an infant. When she, I, I loved her. She just spoke so well. Some of those people, like that attorney, I thought, my God, you still buy into all this shit. Like, seriously? And, um, and I thought it was interesting, too, when Sheila said to the people that still follow him, do not take away the story of what happened in Oregon. Do not erase that or delete that from the story because that's an important part of the story. And what she was saying was they want to delete it because they don't want his reputation tar tarnished. But for four years, they literally lived in this utopian society. And if that was possible there, no matter what the people in Oregon thought, no matter, you know what the people around the world, if they thought they were crazy and what they were, and I think we know there was a lot of craziness that occurred, but even still, the idea of a utopian society could be possible. And, that there, and what she was saying was, you know, that this idea of love, compassion, kindness, respect, although they believed in all that, but then, did you think it was interesting when he said, I don't believe in an eye for, or he said, I don't believe in turning the other cheek, I believe in taking both cheeks, or something like that? I was like, oh, okay, like, that's crazy town. But anyway, there were so many, there was so much, I don't know, she just was likable to me. There was something about Sheila, she had a, a mass confidence, did she not? Like, and I think she so purely believed in her cause, of what she was doing. And she wasn't a bullshit artist. Like when people would say, but you like the power, she'd say, of course I like the power. Why wouldn't I like the power? I think she abused her power, but I think she abused her power because she really believed in what she was doing, you know? I don't know, I had such a weird response to that documentary. I thought it was so well done. Um, I didn't wanna like her, but like I did. Like, do you ever know anybody like that in real life? Like you don't wanna like them, but you really kinda do. Do you know what I mean? It's kinda like that. It was different than I thought it would be. I thought it was very, very well done. I don't know how I ever lived growing up and never once um, knew anything about that. Never knew that that ever existed in our country. It's about to stop, so I'm gonna stop it and I'll be right back. Anyway, I think it's crazy. Like, I never even knew that that had occurred in our country. I, I've never heard anything about it. I don't remember my parents talking about it. Like, isn't that weird? Do you guys think that's weird? I don't know. And then I was watching this other one today. I started... These are like, it's funny, because I all the time people ask me, like, well, what do you watch on YouTube? Who do you watch on YouTube? But, like, I don't really watch, like, YouTubers that much, like, consistently. I used to back in the day. I used to watch RJ and Will at Shep 689. They recently broke up, which makes me sad. But, it, um... I mean, people will, I guess, grow apart. It's hard when it's on YouTube, though, because it really feels like the ending of a TV show, doesn't it? It's like... You know what I mean? You become very invested in the characters of YouTube. Do I seem like a character to you guys? I don't have the kind of followers that they have. But I can remember, like, watching them when they had, like, 10,000 subscribers, and I was like, oh, my God, they have 10,000 subscribers. That is, like, so many... crazy that girl Bridget today that I met you know like when she looked at me and she said I mean like she like took my arm and she said please whatever you do don't stop making your purism's channel videos 
And it was like such a, like a, just an innocent moment. Like, I don't know. It meant, it meant so much to me. You know, I think like, okay, let's have a real moment. So I like I get this question a lot. Do you know how many people you positively impact? And like to answer that question, I think you have to be somewhat arrogant or full of ego. But the reality is people tell me a lot that I do, but I don't know that I really believe it, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that I really comprehend it. And seeing her today, like, emotionally, like, I'm just a person, you know? Like, literally, I'm just a person, you know? That makes videos, because I love to tell stories and share shit about my life. And she's sitting there, and, like, these videos that I make that are 10 minutes long a day, she's like telling me never to stop making them because they got her through, you know, whatever. I'm like, wow, like, that's pretty cool, you know? I love that channel. And then she she was like, I watched it when it was my so-called healthy life, and I, and I watched it when it changed, and I was so excited about the change and how successful it was, and I love that channel. And I feel like this is kind of a longer version of that channel, so to speak. And I feel like my booktube channel is like my fun channel. Like, where, like, that's my passion, you know what I mean? And then like my drama channel is like where I get to really have an opinion about stuff. I watched that video back that I did about all my opinions about drama and I had a really good time like making that video. Like, I thought it sounded foolish when I was making it. Like I thought I sounded silly and stupid, but when I watched it back, I was like, no, you really kind of, you mean, you said what you had to say, you know? So you guys, it is, um, I have officially, are you ready for this? I've officially, as of midnight tonight, been a vegetarian for one year. A, like, I cannot believe it, you guys. A year ago today, on August 1st, I said that I was going to start being a vegetarian and I was going to try to do it for 30 days and it has been a year. And, uh, I think, like, going forward, I don't really want to talk too much about it because, um, like I said, I want to keep a lot of my, like, like my weight loss getting it. I, I, you know, Alex and I were talking about that last night, but I want to keep a lot of that to myself and what I'm going to do with it. But, like, I've reached out to two separate people about possibly, like, coaching me fitness-wise. And one of them's local, this guy that I know. And he's very, very cool. And the other one is um, that Danny gets fit. And he said he was totally willing to do it. I think he, like, charges people to coach and stuff, which is, that's fine. I would do that. But, um... You know, I've done this for a year. There have been moments where... Dominican Republic was interesting for me because I really thought... And I'm probably gonna make a video tomorrow. Videos like this from now on about like my recovery and videos about, you know, like it's hard because I want them to get watched by more people. So I usually put them on my other channel, but I think I'm gonna start just keeping them on my Peterism's channel. So tomorrow I'm probably gonna do a video called, you know, one year as a vegetarian, um, what I've learned or something. But I'm by no means like a healthy vegetarian. Like I eat a lot of starches, lots of pasta, lots of cheese. You know, I'm just not a healthy vegetarian. I'm just not. I think we know that. I eat a lot of snacks, a lot of candy, you know. But I think going forward, I want to be a healthy vegetarian. I want to eat more vegetables and fruits and be more like, you know, fruit and plant-based plant with what I eat. 
Um, cause I've done it for a year. So now it's like, okay, like up, up the game. You know what I mean? You've done this Well, that was hard. Like Dominican Republic was interesting because when I was there, I thought there's no way, like I, I have, there's no options here. There was literally like one thing on the menu a day and I just did it. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to just make this work. And you know, like, I think that would be the hardest thing I have found. And maybe it's just because of where we live, but that there's very few options on menus. But I have found that restaurants are very cool with that. Like when you go and you ask, like they're willing to make, I mean like no questions asked. They're always like, oh yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that. Or, oh, we have a vegetarian thing, but we don't tell people that. Miami was super easy to be a vegetarian. Um, Last night, this Ballo, or two nights ago, that Ballo at Mohegan Sun Casino that we went to, like, they had not one vegetarian meal on their entire menu except for a salad. And I said to the woman, I go, okay, so I'm a vegetarian. I go, could they just do, like, you know, a fettuccine or so? She's like, we can do whatever you want. Yeah, sure, no problem. Totally cool. She made me this great, just, like, basically, like, buttered noodles. And it was fantastic. And, um... I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Like, Alex was talking tonight when we were flying back about how he wants to, um, like, so we're going to Ultra Music Festival next year with, um, Melissa and Jason. So expensive to stay in Miami that week. We're thinking about maybe getting an Airbnb if we can find one, but so Alex was like, well, what if we um, didn't stay for like seven or ten days in Miami? Like we ten days was too long. We're only gonna stay for seven days if we do that. But he was like, what if we don't do that next time and instead we um like the day or two after we fly to Tulum. Like, we go to Cancun and then stay in Tulum. I'm like, that's a trip, Alex. He was like, I know, but we can do, like, three days in Miami and, like, five or six days in Tulum, and it would be just as expensive. I'm like, no, it really wouldn't be. And this is my husband's response to everything. If we save money and we just make it work, we can make it work. I'm like, okay, like, you pay the bills. There's just only so much money to save and they're left over. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. I'm like, okay. I was telling him that, like, this trip this weekend, getting out of town and just being in a small little town in, you know, Essex, Connecticut and staying at a bed and breakfast, which, you know, like, his work paid for, so we didn't have to pay for that, but it was so nice and it was just nice to get away for the weekend and just be with my husband, like someplace that we had never either one of us stayed before and something kind of different. And I said, you know, I want to do more of these like weekend trips. Like when we used to, there was a period where we would go to like Louisville one weekend and we used to stay down there. There's a hotel in Louisville called the 24, 24 C, I think. It's like this museum hotel. And they actually have this huge art gallery inside of it. And then we would like go eat dinner at this restaurant that they had attached to it called Proof. And a uh, very cool restaurant. It's like they had these booths that were like, one would be like decorated like Louis Vuitton. Then the next one was like Gucci. And then the next one was like Coach. And like the next one was like Ferragamo. They were very cool. And then they had like those, they had this, these things hanging, these like paper pigeons that were hanging throughout the restaurant, but they were exploding. And it was this like installment art that this guy had done that if you like give supposedly Alka-Seltzer to a pigeon, they explode. I don't know if that's like a rumor or whatever, but this restaurant was cool. And then we would walk around the gallery and then we would um, go out in downtown. We used to go to the Connection, but now it's not there anymore. So, or they reopened it. I don't know what it is, but we haven't been to play yet down there. But this hotel room was very cool and it had like exposed brick and it was very artsy. They, I think they're supposed to be opening one here and I think they might have one in Nashville, I'm not sure. Or we go to like Chicago and we'd stay at like the public hotel up there, which is very cool. It's like one of the, I don't know if it's still open or not. I think it is. It used to be the Ambassador East. Um, but we used to just do little trips like that all the time. We don't do that anymore. Well, we haven't. 
Oh. And I have to say, like, I've always wanted to stay in a bed and breakfast, but I've always kind of been afraid. And this wasn't like a typical bed and breakfast, like where... Okay, this was so weird. It reminded me of... So, do you guys know that was named Richard Paul Evans? Is that his name? He writes, like, all those Christmas books at the Christmas box and stuff. Well, I had read this book two years ago. It was actually a pretty good book if you read it around Christmas time and you read it quick. But I didn't even finish it until February or July. I think I may have finished it in July. I'll have to, I'd have to go back and look at my Goodreads. But it was called, like, Dashing Through... No, it's called the, Michel, the Mistletoe Secret. And it was about this guy and... He, like, all of his Richard Paul Evans books are like this. And he, uh, I finally did finish that Christmas box book. And I think I watched the movie, too. I don't remember. But anyway, yeah, I did watch the movie. He, I tried to last year read as many Christmas books and stuff as I possibly could, remember? So anyway, um, because I really wanted to enjoy the Christmas season. So I watched, like, all these Christmas movies, all the Christmas specials, you know, Christmas food, Christmas candles, Christmas carols. I listened to Christmas carols on Sirius Radio from like November whenever all the way through whenever they started. Watched, read all the books, listened to the audiobooks and on and on. But anyway, um, this book was about this guy and his wife had left him for another guy and he was like real lonely and he just wanted to meet a woman and fall in love and so he started reading this woman's blog and he could like pick up secrets from like where she was at and so he went to this town and it was like he found it was like in Idaho I think or something like that and it was like in this middle of this town and it was like she said after New Year she would be gone and like never coming back to that town again and it was real dark and sinister like she was gonna I think end her life or something but anyway she was real depressed about everything that had happened to her but so he like went to go try to find her well he stays in this bed and breakfast and it's like Christmas town galore at this bed and breakfast and that's kind of what I thought of being in this bed and breakfast I was like this is cute like I'd like to stay in a bed and breakfast over Christmas I think that would be fun but we used to go to Gatlinburg too Alex and I not just my I mean after my mom passed away well listen you guys how long have I been vlogging now? 24, 14, it's 34, it's 38. I've been vlogging for a long time because I think I have some footage from earlier today when I was packing and stuff. So I'm going to get off here and listen to my audiobook for a little bit. And then, well, not much longer because it's late. And then go home and go to bed because I have a lot to do tomorrow. Dogs and picking up PP's medicine and all kinds of stuff. I can't wait to get my dogs tomorrow. I miss my dogs. I miss my babies. So anyway, um, Tanya said PB has not coughed one time since he was there. And she said, and Boo and Tucker think they own the place. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. And I hope you're having a wonderful week. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.